Hey, what's up you guys? My name is John. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and like this video. Uh, today we're going to give you a tour and walk around of something that we just finished building. It's uh, the most magnificent chicken coop you've ever seen. That is actually six chicken coops all in one. Let's get into it. So we're calling this the Chicken Village. Um, originally our idea was to have sort of six or twelve uh, completely separate chicken coops that would end up sort of looking like, you know, an old Wild West town where you have like the saloon and the barber shop. You know, that's not exactly our aesthetic, but like kind of the idea that we were going to go for. Um, and so each one of these is going to have a separate run. They're all separate from each other. There's a dividing wall in between there because this is going to be uh, the house for our breeding operation. So right now we have uh, three different varieties of chickens in the truck that we transported from our house. Um, look for that video next week. Uh, and we are basically gonna have breed isolation in here. So each breed gets their own coop, they get their own run. Um, so that someday down the road, hopefully soon, uh, we'll be able to sell hatching eggs. And maybe even in the spring we can have some you know, particular babies. Um, so we have, right now we have silkies, we have silked white full-size chickens and we have some Morans. Um, so those are the first three that are going to go in here. We also have some Polish chickens. We have Bard Rocks, Black Americanas, and Rhode Island Reds coming in August. Or Pinkton's coming in August. The uh, Rhode Island Reds come in October along with the Appenzeller Spitzhaubens. So, so we're gonna need a with more coops. <laughs> yeah. but so the whole idea behind this was especially now in July 2021, lumber prices are actually coming down, but they are still crazy ridiculous. So we were as efficient as possible in building this. Um, you know, we used this metal corrugated roofing that we're never going to use again because I hate it. Um, and we used, as you can see right here, we used pallet boards for the door um, and then just painted them different colors. I think they look super cute. Um, and yeah, so now I'm gonna go through just a little bit of like our thought process behind building it and the materials we used. So we're actually not 100% finished with these coops. We still have some finishing trim to do and also to fill in some of these holes. Um, but so we have the first three done and that's where our chickens are gonna go right now. Today we're gonna to work on setting the posts for the runs. Um, and then basically we'll have a piece of trim in between these coops and that's where the chicken wire will go to divide them. Um, so we used smart side paneling for the siding, which is um, this, you know, pressed, pressed board, sort of like OSB, um, that's already primed on one side so it's super easy to paint. You know, even just this white, I think Kat only did one coat. Um, you know, it looks really good. So we had that. We I built a pressure treated floor for it um, and as you can sort of see from one end to the other our ground is very not level here um, so we had to sort of build it out that way but at least it's level um, but that actually gave us another problem which I haven't told Cat about yet but so if we build the run over here and we have it the same height as the coop it's only going to be that tall mm -hmm. so we may need to build the run higher overall so that it's six feet on this side and then it'll end up being like eight feet on that side you know after all the trouble we went through with rebuilding the runs at home so that we could stand up inside them it's well worth it to make sure that you can actually stand up inside the runs especially because that's where the food and water is going to be so doing that times six or seven for norman and then you know probably times 12 uh, once we have the other coops done and our other chickens there it's going to make more sense in the long run to have a very tall coop or a tall run. So the other thing that we used for all these different colors, each one of these with the exception of the stain were oops paint. Also, so was the white. 
So if you go into like the big box stores like Lowe's and Home Depot and you go to the paint section, you'll find paint that people either had mixed and didn't pick up, or they had the mixed and then realized like, oh my God, that's a really ugly color, uh, and then exchanged it. So if you see this one right here, this is actually a solid stain. So somebody may have wanted to stain their deck or something like that and then found this beautiful turquoise teal um, and then decided not to take it. But we got a gallon of this for $9. The white exterior paint that we used to paint the outside of the coupe was a five gallon bucket that retailed for $250. 30 bucks. You can't beat that, especially because, you know, it's good exterior paint. In the past, we had tried using like interior paint to try to save some money, um, but it just doesn't go well. So can't go wrong with oops paint. So another thing that we always, that always seems like a really good free resource that we picked up a lot of and then tend to not really use are pallets. Um, but so we used pallets for both, as you saw, the front doors and as the nesting box doors. Um, but so basically what we did was instead of spending a whole lot of time breaking the pallets down, you know, so they have three skids for the most part, which are sort of like two by fours, and then the slats get bolt to get nailed onto there. So instead of un, of, instead of taking out the nails on the outside edge, we just took our circular saw and ran down both sides. So we only had to take out the nails from the middle, um, and then that gave us plenty of usable space of pallet wood for both the front doors and this. Um, which is nice because originally I was going to try to use the metal roof for these, but it just Cutting it was a real pain in the neck and it just didn't look smooth um, So I, I didn't want to use that so this was actually a really nice solution for that and I was planning on using More of the siding for the front doors, but that would have used up like another sheet or two So we saved ourselves a lot of money in just using the pallets for the front and nesting boxes so a lot of people ask us about the plans we use and if they're available online. I'll put up uh, my plans that I used um, to build these, although it's not quite a cut list and like super duper detailed plans, but you'll be able to see the skeleton and how I framed everything out, uh, which will probably be helpful for you. Um, one of the things that I made sure to do with this was do a lot of planning beforehand. It took me three to four days to nail down the actual layout because I wanted to make sure that we used all of our materials as efficiently as possible. And so you'll see even like this smart siding here, usually these lines run vertically so that the rainwater can just go right through them. But since there's so many different sized cuts, like this is like 20 inches, and then this is like 40 inches or something like that, it just didn't make a whole lot of sense. It would have taken a whole lot more time to cut up the boards like that. So we just ran them sideways like this and it made a whole lot more sense to put up, it made it way easier. But oh, we're gonna put our plans up on oldwritingfarm.com, so check them out. That's our website. You can check out other things there too. We'll have yarn there in the next couple months. So each one of these coops is four feet wide by six feet long. So you can see there's actually plenty of room for me in here, which is kind of crazy. Um, so that'll be 24 square feet, uh, and we plan to have 10 to 12 birds in here, so about two square feet per bird. Um, and we'll be able to have two or three nesting boxes in here, just depending on how much patience I have on the day that I put the dividers in. Um, and then we're gonna have an eight foot by six foot run on each of them. So they'll have another you know, 48 square feet of space there. And yeah. So each one is divided. There's just a small wall right here. Um, and the roof on this side is, so it's 48 inches tall from the bottom of the, uh, from the floor to the top of the roof pitch. And then it slopes down to like 35 inches or something like that. So there's enough of a slope so that we don't have to worry about snow load or anything like that. And we have enough of a, an edge right here so that Hopefully too much weather doesn't come in here when we let the chickens out. Alright, thank you guys very much for watching this video. We really appreciate it. Mm. If you want to learn how to fix your muddy chicken run, check out this video right here. The advice that we got changed our lives and it will change yours too. We put out new videos on Mondays and Fridays and we go live every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So make sure to stop by and say hello next time. See you later.